Well, the Federal Reserve has always been intended to be independent, free of government interference. But that doesn't mean President-elect Trump won't be able to reshape its policy leanings. Some reports say Trump will fill two vacant seats on the Fed's Board of Governors. Both will have the power to vote on monetary policy, opening the way for Trump to theoretically influence it. Trump could probably further shape the Fed to his liking if he decides to replace current chair Janet Yellen and vice chair Stanley Fisher, whose terms will both end in 2018. The president-elect criticized Yellen and Fed policymakers during his campaign for, quote, not doing their job. Well, for more on the Federal Reserve and the future it faces under a Trump presidency, we're joined by William Black, live from Minneapolis. He's an associate professor of economics and law from the University of Missouri at Kansas City. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, we've seen that President-elect Trump soften or perhaps pivot away in certain stances that he voiced while on the campaign trail. Is there any indication that that will extend to his views about what he sees as a politically biased Federal Reserve? There's no indication either direction, uh, but there's also no evidence of political bias uh, on the part of uh, Janet Yellen. So uh, it, at this point, it's simply unknown. Certainly, um, Yellen has denied the allegations. Um, now, coming up, two Fed board governors that Trump could potentially nominate and a vice chair of supervision, someone who would oversee the country's biggest banks and even more departures expected in the next 18 months. How much of an impact could these appointments have? The appointment of the head of supervision could uh, be dramatic, and it will be a real indicator of where Trump uh, is. Um, so uh, obviously, you're moving from campaign to actually becoming president. One of the things you have to do is uh, he was on the campaign trail, uh, a critic, a very strong critic of uh, big banks. Maybe he want real supervision. On the other hand, the head of his transition team in this area, Paul Atkins, is known as uh, someone who hates strong supervision, hates strong regulation. Uh, so will Trump win or will uh, the professionals within his transition team win on, the, uh, on that selection? That'll be a big indicator to the world. And speaking of his transition team, Trump has largely leaned on advisors who tended to have business backgrounds as opposed to some of these academics. So what are some of the pros and cons if he applies that same business mindset when it comes to shaping the Federal Reserve? I don't think there's anything particularly negative about uh, appointing people to the Federal Reserve from business backgrounds as opposed to academic, uh, economic uh, backgrounds. After all, the academics have had a terrible record. But the Federal Reserve is already set up to um, overemphasize business concerns. We have these 12 regional feds, and they are very heavily influenced by their local large corporations. And, and the system is designed that way. So it, it's, it's not hostile in the least to input from banking. In fact, there are a whole series of mechanisms that ensure that every month business has enormous input to the Federal Reserve. Now, obviously, we have to look at the Fed Chair Janet Yellen, obviously, who Trump was very critical of on the campaign trail. Can we expect her to finish her term? And if not, would that send any particular message about the stability of U.S. monetary policy going forward? Yeah, I think that she will finish her term unless there's something in her personal life that comes up. Uh, because it would simply send uh, a bad signal in these circumstances to be uh, pushed out. Uh, she uh, was selected, after all, over the opposition of President Obama, who wanted to put Larry Summers on, who was a political-type uh, person to a far greater degree. Janet Yellen is a academic's academic, uh, and by the way, her spouse is a Nobel laureate in economics, George Akerlof. So, uh, they are some of the very class people. Uh, Trump, uh, if he settles down, will understand that uh, having Janet Yellen as chairman of the Fed adds to his administration. It will burnish the reputation as opposed to detract. So uh, I'm not sure he'll continue this war now that the campaign is over. 
And just lastly, William, there's still not that much wiggle room when it comes to monetary policy should the country suffer an economic shock and needing stimulus. Yellen has already warned that some parts of Trump's plans, namely the $1 trillion infrastructure spending, could really raise the national debt and potentially lead to trouble for the economy down the road. So where could the, go where could the Fed go from there policy-wise if a shock were to happen? Well, that's one area where I think that she uh, is wrong. I think that uh, that kind of stimulus would be uh, excellent for the United States uh, and uh, be critical to the recovery. And I think that would help uh, the rest of the world a great deal, particularly the Eurozone, which is you know, poised on the edge of falling back into recession uh, for years now. Uh, and I don't think it will require much of any action by the Fed other than very small uh, increases in interest rates, which are, after all, are at uh, historic lows. Right. So, you know, no particularly big deal. All right, well, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. William Black, Associate Professor of Economics and Law at the University of Missouri at Kansas City.